cut off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I got this either as a present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Savior Movie View. Excuse me. There we go. Eventually I'll probably get quicker at doing that. Plot. An American mercenary in the French Foreign Legion tries to help a young woman in war-torn Bosnia. Now the movie is 99 minutes with credits and an 96 with or rather, uh, yeah 96 without I can't help but wonder if there should at least exist an alternate cut of this where we start with Quaid in Bosnia and we don't know or we don't we at least don't see his background and I think what would you do need it's 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 an important thing that he did have a child, but other than that, um, yeah, I, I'll get into why. And to briefly cover another aspect of the, the first chunk of the film, some people think that the opening, that the opening, among other things, perhaps, but certainly the opening has a an anti-Muslim message. The opening tells us why Joshua or Guy Guy hates Muslims. It is not saying that the audience should also hate Muslims. And over the course of the film, you find it encourages to hate no one, or if you wish, everyone. It's that the, the awful circumstances in Bosnia makes monsters of everyone. You know, some say, oh, but they had a gun in the mosque. One. And it didn't come into play until after the shooting. They had one gun. It could have been for self-defense. It may not even have been in the mosque itself. That would explain why it took a minute to get it. You know, running out of another one of the exits of the mosque, getting a gun from another building, running back through the mosque, and yeah, the 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 guy runs out and shoots at the person who just shot several of his friends, you know, his fellow Muslims sitting there praying. It's completely understandable that he he might, you know. Him shooting at, at Joshua at that point doesn't make him a terrorist or a sympathizer. For all he knew, Josh was just reloading and was coming back in. Now, honestly, overall, if you do leave this movie thinking that it was biased against any group or individual, it's most likely your own bias that you're projecting onto the film. And with absolutely no offense intended, I know that's a dangerous thing to say, if you don't know the history of the region, the fighting parties and such, you may have some trouble following this. It, the movie is not made to educate you on what happened between who and why. And if you need to like wiki it after the film is done, then rewatch and you'll understand it better, then that's that. It is not supposed to guide you by the hand through the... yeah. It is... It is in part an outsider's view of what's going on, but it's not, and, and you know, that is also 
that is part of it. It's confusing to those who come in from the outside and to those it does look like everyone is you know being monsters to everyone else and it you know you you see a lot of awful things done and you fairly rarely know really what the background is of that like again you know Joshua you you know for sure why he hates Muslims and that helps explain why he went to Bosnia but beyond that you know there are a lot of them where it's just well they fought us so we do the worst thing we can to them excuse me That's better. On plot. I'm not sure if the filmmakers realized that calling it savior correlates with the trope of the white savior, the western country enlightened person coming to a non-western country to save people there from their problems. Would it really not have been possible to make this movie without involving an American? I get that it's important to the film in its current state that the lead be an outsider, but it really didn't need to be an American. Him being an English speaker at all is purely to increase the audience. But one can have an argument about who the title refers to. And the movie is very much about how war turns men cruel. It's very telling what situations we do see a little humanity in, who it is towards, and who it's by. And the director was a political prisoner during the conflict depicted in the film. And Quaid, in an interview on the DVD, says that it, while it's set in Bosnia, it's about all war. Other than Unruled Rise of the Lycans, I'm not familiar with the other work of the writer or director. With all respect to Oliver Stone as a writer and a director, I love several of his pieces of work. He made the right choice not to write or direct this because it is not his story to tell. Others have noted there are a few things in the film that come off as comic relief and really doesn't fit the otherwise stark tone I th I think the idea is kind of that if if you never like yeah is if if everything around you is just misery then s you have to find just some levity and and I that's I I think that the if if maybe to two people who lived through it, maybe they can find some levity in the situations, but to to a, a person in the West who sits down and watches an anti-war war movie, it just it really does not fit with it, and and maybe that's part of the yeah, it's. And like other low-budget films, there are things that it doesn't show that we expect, again, as a Western audience member for a cinema movie, that we expect to see, such as, with a few exceptions, squibs when people are shot. Rotten Tomatoes. Now... This has a 56% on the tomato meter, which is unbelievable. And an average rating of 6.5 out of 10. And, you know, five fresh reviews, four rotten reviews. And, you know, of course, that is part, that is part of it. That it does, 
it doesn't have that many reviews, but yeah, I, I don't know. And the but the onion score makes somewhat more sense. Eighty-one percent liked it. The average rating three point six out of five, with four thousand three hundred ninety-one user ratings. Critics pros. A very violent drama that takes a visceral stand against vengeance and ethnic cleansing. Dennis Quaid, his, you know, the actor's familiar rakish smile has faded into the hollow eyed gaze of a weather-beaten soldier who long ago discarded his humanity in the muck of some forgotten battlefield. It really, at, at the very start, he does, he's, he's charming, he's smiling, just like we've seen in, in other movies, but yeah, once the, after the, the deaths in the, in the opening of the film, the yeah after that point he is and it's it's for that it is very good that we do get the opening because otherwise we wouldn't know it's it's important to see that he's capable he or was capable anyway of you know, it's it's important to see he wasn't always broken. In fact, it wasn't very long ago that he wasn't broken. The film portrays a land whose people, regardless of ethnicity, have been reduced to animalistic survival tactics by the violence that has devastated the region. War has turned seemingly ordinary people into potential murderers, rapists, and torturers. The movie's unblinking scenes of atrocities are among the most graphic and upsetting ever shown in a commercial film. In one scene, a woman in her final weeks of pregnancy is thrown to the ground and repeatedly kicked in the stomach by a sadistic young soldier. I'm going to try not to get into spoilers and I'm yeah in in this section of the video I do think it's worth notes you know that's that's how some reviewers but you know repeatedly he kicks her maybe a dozen times it's not two or three it's yeah Yeah, a, a group of civilians rounded up by a troop of soldiers are lined up one by one and clobbered over the head with a mallet while the commanding officer calmly shaves in a mirror. Prolonged just enough to make you wish the camera would turn away, these scenes rub your face in the horror to a degree few movies have dared. The battle scenes in Saber Prime Ryan may be gorier, but they don't convey anything close to the intensity of cruelty and hatred that are so palpable in the scenes of torture and butchery in, this, in Savior. As Guy awakens by degrees to his own capacity for compassion, the fable of a killer turned humanitarian often feels like a sentimental contrivance. I'm not sure I'm going to get into why in this spoiler-free section of the video, but there is a reason why the... Yeah, I've, I've... Actually, I guess I've 
said enough things that you can piece together what the opening is. The film conveys the nihilistic essence of war with the force of a kick in the gut. It is both timely and relevant that the Serbian war be brought home to us in the relative safety in the West of the West, where understanding of the issues is at best vague, but where sympathy for the victims is genuine. In fact, Savior touches on a much neglected issue in that war. The culture that impels families to reject their rape daughters for having dishonored the family. This has always seemed to me uh, to be a greater crime of the heart than the rape itself being perpetrated by the girl's own family. The traumatized young woman is not only a victim of ethnically driven hate rape, but also a victim of blind ignorance and primitive lore. The film avoids simplistic finger pointing. Everyone is equally shamed by the story and all the symbolic representatives of the world and participants of all, on all sides to outsiders of all kinds are condemned. It's a tough herring film made very capably with some fine performances, but I found it to be too much a creation of the American filmmaking machine. And that's ultimately, there is some truth to that. By no means a band film and certainly emotionally engaging and draining, but it too often feels contrived. And the redemption story is a tad too predictable and signposted with too many big letters. It doesn't matter which side Dennis Quaid's mercenary finds himself on, all of humanity is reduced to its most base instincts in the presence of war, racial hatred, interminable tribalism. Actually, that's not true. All men, the women in this film, seem to be the only ones who escape the madness of obsessive hatred. It's through the women that Guy continually finds redemption. It is a masterful performance from Quaid, the opportunity screens. Critics, users. It depicts soldiers not as white and black, but in gray area. This movie judges does not judge good and bad sides of war, but its effect on people.
One reviewer says, none of the characters are fleshed out enough to care about. I think that's just looking at it the wrong way. The Yeah, the characters aren't fleshed out enough, but it's not really about characters. The, you know, I don't know, maybe that's not the right way to put it, but I... I I mean, if, if that's how you look at it, then I can't, I can't, I'm not going to lie and say, no, they are very fleshed out. They're not, but that's not a flaw of the film, and it's, it's most definitely intentional. A film of two halves, almost two films. The first half is utterly horrid, a sort of low-rent B-movie. The second half is utterly amazing. And I don't completely agree with that, but there is some... It, it definitely... The movie has some problems with the... In, in pacing and... Yeah. The, the first chunk goes by really fast, and then it skips and the rest of the movie doesn't have that much to do with that first chunk. Arguably the most gripping movie on Civil War ever made. I, I will say very very different movie, but do also watch Grubawika if that's how you pronounce it, the the some sometimes it's called Sarajevo, sometimes Esma's Secret, amazing movie also about this conflict. Very different movie, but both amazing. When the communism collapsed, the tribal na nationalism broke through in Yugoslavia. Bosnia was almost always the most complex of all the Yugoslav states, having the people of three nations and three different religions. And yeah, the tribalism survived even the communist suppression. A number of reviewers are like, yeah, yeah, I've already gone into that some. I was going to get into, you know, bias for or against certain groups of people, but I've said all that I need to say about that. Yeah, this reviewer has some good points. The... Yeah, I'm not gonna get into that part, but... The film skips a couple of large chunks of time with barely an explanation. And that's... Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I don't, the movie wouldn't have been the same if the opening had been, excuse me, Thank you. 
So about that. Yeah, the 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 yeah, you know, it it skips. The opening couldn't have worked as well as a flashback. I acknowledge that the the movie does use a few flashbacks, but it really does, and. And the opening of the movie, if it had been much longer, then either there would have been too little time for the rest. You know, the rest of the movie is the important part. The opening is just a little bit of background. If if this movie was a book, then the opening, you know, it might it might have been like a prologue to the book. It wouldn't have had a chapter of its own, you know. It's just, it's necessary for us to know at least some of what we find out in the opening and it's necessary for us to know it from very early on and you know and and if this if it was even more of a hollywood movie it would be tied more closely to you know the the opening is in in paris i want to say if it were more of a hollywood movie maybe it would have been in bosnia from the very start but the yeah it's it's a problem for the film unfortunately and i don't think there's any good solution for it but like i said i i do th think that it would be interesting if there was an alternate cut of it that starts in bosnia now this reviewer does say that Quaid shows no emotion throughout the entire film. I, I disagree. And at the very start, he does show emotion. It's just there's no yeah, actually. It, yeah, yeah. He's he shows emotion. He's clearly happy to be around his wife and kid, and frustrated when he has to when when that time is cut short. I yeah. I don't know. And this one reviewer says that Quaid isn't convincing as like this kind of cold killer. I don't, I'm so. I, f I feel like I'm I'm trying to argue that the sky really is blue here. I I don't know how you can't find him convincing as that. I I don't know. I guess maybe if you like just watched one of the movies where he's all happy and smiling constantly, and and that's like stuck in your mind, maybe. But I find him completely convincing from start to finish. And yeah, this other reviewer, Dennis Quaid is the man for this part. He is an excellent actor on so many levels. Yeah, I've had to. Savior is a film that forces you to confront, confront the harsh realities of the world. It doesn't play scenes for excitement or entertainment, nor does it offer an easy escape for the audience. Since Quaid loses everything he loves and turns into a, turns into a monster. The film is about his redemption. Yeah, it could be argued as to whether he is the savior or if that label goes to the baby he is protecting. Slowly Quaid regains his humanity, but it isn't some schmaltzy love fest. It shows Quaid's frustration and anger as part of what makes him human. 
film is very grim and hard to watch. And this is mainly due to the relaxed style. I'm not going to try to pronounce, but the director adopts scenes you can imagine containing slow motion, quick cuts, and powerful music are simply shot and edited as they would happen. And that's, yeah, 100%. That's, again, that's the perfect way. And again, I'm I'm sorry, Oliver Stone, I love some of, some of his, some, some of, Oliver Stone is not going to watch this movie, I'm not going to pretend to talk directly to him, but Oliver Stone has directed some amazing movies, but if he had, if he had directed or edited this one, it would be operatic, and that's, that would be completely wrong for it, that would just, 100% completely wrong, I mean, Imagine if this had been edited similar to Natural Born Killers, which, again, I, that's an amazing movie, but it's just not the, the right... And, and I do... I'm sorry. At the end of the day, I have always taken issue with... Oliver Stone says of that movie, you know, I wanted to make... You know, I didn't want the violence to be cool. And I think it's like in, in like a documentary or something that, you know, shows... Him saying that, and then it cuts. Then, then it cuts in that bit where the knife is like flying through the air in slow mo, and it's just. I'm sorry. I don't. Maybe, maybe he doesn't interact with teenagers that much, but that part seems kind of cool. I'm not saying you know, it's not a cool movie. It's, it's about two psychopathic killers. It's not cool, but. That's not the way to edit something violent to make it not seem cool to, you know, and this, and the movie it didn't come out in like the 90s. 90s kids loved stuff like that, you know. I Personally, I, all, I, I didn't find it cool. I always thought this is really horrifying. But, yeah, I've, you know, people my age back then found stuff like that really cool. Okay. If you took just that clip and, like, showed it as, like, part of, you know, and, yeah, just showed that clip out of context, showed it to someone, and they didn't know that it was from a movie that was supposed to horrify you, they might think that was kind of cool. You know, no one watches this movie and says that any of the horrific stuff in it was kind of cool. Far Cry from Hollywood, what really caught my attention is the very fact that no sense portrayed as the good guys. And there's no place for heroic BS either. Things just go from bad to worse. It's powerful. And... A film on human evil and redemption that is not forced manages to give a balanced look on a complicated situation and is truly heartbreaking. A powerful drama of man's inhumanity to man, juxtaposed with the redemptive power of hope, it does not descend into mawkish sentimentality. in part due to the director's refusal to steer away from the stark brutalities of war. The director is Serbian, but the film is an indictment of all sides in the Bosnian War. There are cool Serbs, Bosniaks, and Croats, as well as Serb, Bosniak, and Croat victims and heroes.
yeah, I've already kind of hinted at the, yeah, the opening, you know, because of Joshua, yeah, entering the, the mosque and shooting, he has to, you know, the only way he can, you know, it's, it's murder. So, obviously, the only way for him to not end up, you know, convicted for this is to escape into the French Foreign Legion. And that I do think, that's, that's, it's fairly strong to see the, the, it's, it's, it's very short. But you do see the just this this montage, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's a montage of just him, you know, reaching the level expected in the French Foreign Legion, and over it there is, you know, some. Yeah, bas basically a, the the. Like. The, the declaration of intent of the French Foreign Legion, including this about, you know, you get a new life, a new chance. And, you know, I, I suppose you could say that that's almost like hand-holding for the audience, but I do think that it's... It, that is maybe something that needed to be... You know, this... it's not... He doesn't just change his name, he is a different person for the rest of the movie. It's... Yeah, he, he was motivated to become a different person, but the person he is isn't really otherwise connected to the person he was. Again, in a more Hollywood movie, he would have become a vigilante instead of a, a member of the Foreign Legion. Now... Yeah, when the... the when he saves the pregnant Vera he has he basically has to choose between the you know someone he's working with they're, they're they're on the same side but he's the one kicking her and yeah it's you know yeah he he has to one of the two are going to die and uh, yeah, again, I'm I'm just the the actress who plays Vera. I'm not going to butcher her name or the pronunciation. Yeah, she she does an absolutely incredible. You know, much of her performance is without words, much less without English words. And yeah. The movie is of, about the rape of the enemy's woman, leading to them getting cut off by the family, the mass executions, and the sheer random luck of it all. There's just powerful contrasts such as life and death. And the, the movie is mostly silent in the middle and does not subtitle the non-English spoken unless the characters present understand what is said. If if it's a scene with with Guy and someone is speaking a language that isn't English, it's not subtitled because he doesn't understand, so we don't understand. There are maybe one or two scenes where where he isn't present and characters talk and because they understand each other we understand what they say and it is maybe also necessary to I, I don't think the movie would quite have worked without that scene that little bit of yeah, 
not not quite hand holding, but it is maybe a little bit of a shortcut, as the rest of the movie doesn't have the if if there are actually there are a couple of scenes where other characters who are bilingual at least s translate between different people and yeah. There aren't any heroes or villains, just a tragedy. And that's all the, the movie you're basically sitting and just watching horrified throughout. It's, it's the movie starts with with horrific acts and you know not the yeah and and they carry on throughout i'm not going to get into the ending in this portion of the video the movie explains you know, yeah, d d describing war as a state of, state of society where the ones most likely to survive are those who have let go of all values. Notice how neither Guy nor Vera, the main characters, ever fully manage to reach this state of total cynicism, even though they both try. And this is why a quest to regain their humanity is sure to end up victimizing both of them. And that is the thing. It's just you're you're desperate for just this little bit to survive. Just the first twenty minutes of the film had me worried that it would descend into some kind of action hero claptrap. And this reader points out that yeah, once once Quaid is in Bosnia, the movie really begins to shine. And it is maybe also a little convenient <laughs> over the course of the film, Quaid does encounter people who do speak just enough English that he can communicate somewhat with them and yeah at the end of the day that is a bit yeah con convenient and it it's it does also seem like it he should maybe have learned just a little bit of you know local language yeah One reviewer says that the movie didn't make him really feel. He, yeah, he, he says it's not that there's not enough pain to go around, it's just excess. There's too much pain to take it serious. You leave the film with a numbness. And I, again, I'm, I think that that's the wrong way to what. I think that's that's kind of 
I don't want to insult the the person, but I think that it's more that he, as a sort of defense mechanism, kind of cut off. I, I've, yeah, I I don't have that have the the experience that he describes. But I, and I'm not saying that that's, you know, yeah, it, it's, it is, it is not a film for everyone. And I'm not saying I'm better or anything because I get so into the film. But yeah, it's, it's a movie that, it's, it's this kind of, when, when a movie is so unflinching, yeah, some, for some people it's going to be too much. And again, I really, it's it's part of this whole Western audience thing where we we kind of expect, you know, after a while, okay, yeah, but then then there's some kind of release or like maybe the tone shifts back to something that's more comfortable or something. And it's not it's not comfortable. It never. And and really, I mean, some people are going to turn it off less than ten minutes in, and they're not really wrong as such and maybe again maybe this is why the movie is not better rated because it really it is yeah you know there, there are movies that try to do this sort of thing but go too far or think you know movies that think that they're being provocative but that just you know the there there are definitely parts of the butterfly effect that go too far, that are just, you know, just trying to provoke, just trying to be edgy, and yeah, this, you know, and it was just part of Requiem is a movie that's desperate to be called edgy, and that movie goes too far in the pain, but this one just goes right up to the edge and stays on the edge, and that's, yeah, that's that's going to be I, I I don't want anyone to like start watching this movie and then not you know to read other reviews before you before you get a copy or rent a copy or you know I'm I'm not saying that you should if if you feel like this you know there are some movies that that not there are some movies that are amazing but are not for everyone you know. I when I when I first heard the the concept of, of gravity not not the physical law but the 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 movie I was like this is amazing I love this director and I started to watch the trailer and I was like I I had to I had to stop it not very really long into the trailer because I was getting motion sick and that's that's never happened to me on any other movie but it happened there so I. I don't know if I'll ever watch that movie. I would like to, but so I'm not saying you're not you're not wrong. You know, no. Some amazing movies are just more difficult to watch for for some, but I don't think it's right to say that the movie is bad because it was too much for you personally. Not concerned. again, the movie is not flawless. The the jumps in you know the the. I didn't know exactly when, but the first 10 minutes, certainly, like I said, they don't relate that much to what comes like It's, it's, it's a, it's a character bio, basically. It's, it's a few lines of character bio, and again, if you didn't have them, then the rest of the movie would play completely differently. And that sucks, but, yeah, and, and that is, that is something, the, the, the way the movie yeah, it just it's it's really unfortunate. Now. Yeah, this reviewer says the first part of the story seemed rushed and they breezed through the beginning really fast. The rest of the movie, at times brilliant, didn't flow smoothly. He also says that the ending was abrupt and incomplete. I'm not sure I quite agree with that. I 
I will also say don't watch it for the don't watch it for Stellan Skarsgård, don't watch it for Natasha Kinski. You know, if you're going to watch it for any name, watch it for Quaid, but yeah. And there's an argument to be made that the the other two shouldn't even be in it. They're not in it all that much. And and on my on my DVD I believe it's Skarsgård has like he his name appears next to excuse me. Yeah, just straight up. Skarsgård name takes up as much of the cover as Quaid's does. It the the cover only shows Quaid, but that and that's also maybe not the I, I, this movie really isn't, it's not for fans of Quaid as such, really. It, but, again, that's, you know, they're like, how do we get people to care, how do we get people in the West to care about this movie? Dennis Quaid, let's put his name and his, you know, let's plaster him over the cover, and then, and at the end of the day, I mean, I, I forget exactly the circumstance. I think probably my father bought me this DVD and he's been, I mean, he cares really deeply about the the whole region and the, you know, he, he before the the collapse of the Soviet Union, he was already looking into and he was like, this is, this is horrible, this place is not, this is not gonna go well, this place is gonna erupt and the the yeah so you know i mean he he did buy the movie in part because it you know because he knew that that was what it was about he saw so on the cover uh, uh back of the cover whatever but would the movie have been like in a regular store if quaid wasn't in it and on the cover probably not you know the, the, he bought it in a regular store he didn't go to a place that had like really you know and and again we lose a lot because of that you know the, the Gorbavica doesn't have any or I, th I think the 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 actress from it has like done other stuff since but other than that there's no there there's no western face in it there's no line spoken in english in that movie it's all subtitled so yeah, that movie, if you don't... And that movie puts a, a tank on the cover for some reason. There's no tank anywhere in that movie. I really hope that no one bought, you know, and sat down to watch it, and then were like, where's the tank? Because it's not... Yeah. But but at the end of the day, it's also... You know, some movies are difficult to sell. The beginning is a bit unlikely, but it is probably there to give some background for the main character. And the movie is very, realis very realistic in its presentation of the hatred between Muslims and Serbs in the Bosnian War. There is no reason, just hatred. Anyone breeding hate against another race should be made to watch this movie a few times over, and I completely agree with that. So, ship some to the Trump administration. The, the right wing of the U.S. in general. Since I'm fed up with most of the movies that are presented today, mostly Hollywood trash, I really got caught on how raw and unique this movie was. And again, this the the movie could so easily be exploitative. Again, the the you know Alien vs Predator Requiem, the the it's in part how it plays these scenes. You know, the Requiem has so many scenes of just horrible things happening to people who you don't really know, and. 
if you removed a bunch of those scenes, the movie would just be have less of that stuff. It's it's not there because it's really it's just it's there because the directors and the intended fan base thought it was cool to see all this gory stuff. That's that's basically it where in this movie we're seeing that these people did some really horrible things and there's you know I'm I earlier mentioned the the mallet scene it's the it's that they get sadistic it's not they're not quote unquote merely killing these people they're they're raping and bashing in and just they're they're doing they're they're we're talking about people who sit down and try to think of what would be the most horrific thing I could do to these people, you know. And again, I'm not saying that there's any... Everyone is wrong in this conflict, you know. Basically, if, if you... The only way you, you're not wrong in this conflict is if you, like, send in you know, go in and try to get out as many civilians as you can. And there were some, you know, yeah, the, the West did try to, to help some, but so much more should have been done. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that these people were horrible before the war or that they would be horrible if not for the, the history of this area, but as yeah not a cliche in the picture unless one thinks beautiful babies and weeping rescuers is maudlin Moments and tragic scenes. And there might have been more to that, but let's move on. Now. No philosophy, certainly not shoddy, and no low punches. It is a pity that this important film seems to have slipped rather effortlessly beneath the water and plunged to a great depth where only movie fans wearing diving suits and oxygen will be able to raise it for the occasional airing. I do, I, I you know, I, I don't watch TV anymore, but I do hope that a movie like this gets shown every so often on a channel where people expect it to, you know, again, I'm not saying nobody should watch this if they don't feel that they can handle it. Absolutely not. But it should be shown, like, late at night and on networks that are known for showing things that can be really shocking. thought. 
Jones. Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Notes taken during you. We only see the sun very briefly, but I have to say, they did a pretty good job in, yeah, a very short space of time and having to go through these very, you know, very different kind of, you know, he's sitting there quiet in church, then he's like really happy and his father shows up, and then he's really, you know, down when he finds out that his father won't be able to be, you know, yeah, he, he effectively conveys a lot. And yeah, I, there, there are so many child actors who don't do well, and, and this could so easily have been. I, I saw a reviewer think that Natasha Kinski was an annoying character. I don't... Anyway, the, the kid could very easily have been, like, annoying. Like, in movies, in general, when children complain that their parents don't do enough for them or the like, that can so easily get so grating. They can they can come off so spoiled, and it can seem like such a, a minor issue. But this movie, I really I I have to admit I, that was one of the few things I had actually forgotten about the movie, and maybe it's because it goes by so fast. But yeah, I mean, when you see the kid disappointed that his father won't, that yeah, he really. He was, he was very disappointed in that, yeah. And, you know, when, yeah, the, 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 in, in the, yeah, when, when Peter said, you know, asks Joshua, where are you going? He knows him well enough. He, he knows that this is going to go, yeah. And, you know, I noted, as, as the opening credits were rolling, you know, just about nine minutes in, at that point I was already emotionally spent. And again, unlike the other reviewer, the movie never, there's, there's nothing in the movie that's painful to watch that I didn't feel. And, I mean, I've watched it by now maybe at least three times, maybe more. And... Yeah, each time it has that effect. It, yeah, again, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying the other person is the other reviewer is not. You know, it's just yeah, different people have different. That I've watched stuff where I could tell. Okay, this is. You know, I, this is supposed to get a certain reaction out of me, and I just I'm not feeling it. You know, it's not yeah. I want to fight a war I believe in. You want to hate the people you shoot? You'd be nice. And the, you know, the boy, there's there's no visible threat. It's it's clear, you know, again, later we see the, the little girl with the, the, the girl with the, with the grenade behind her back. But the, the boy with the goat, he's clearly, he's got like, some some food in his right hand and his left hand is empty and he's just getting close to the goat and you know yeah guy shoots him and we later do realize you know it's I mean at that point it's probably more revenge or just that he thinks that he should shoot anyone that you know rather than the the 
it's not that he thinks that this kid is dangerous, you know, and 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 again, something that really gets, and you can tell the goat, the goat, the goat can tell. It might not be able to like put, you know, it it might be a little abstract for it. It might not be able to to tell. Okay, the 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 boy who was taking care of me just died, but clearly it can tell that something's wrong, and it's just. And again, this is something, there, there are so many movies that wouldn't even bother with it. It's, it's a goat. Who, who cares what a goat feels? But this movie does. And we do. And, and I mean, it's, it's again, for, for, I, I'm not going to say it doesn't have, makes that much sense necessarily. But the, at the end of the day, sometimes we do have an easier time empathizing with animals than we do with other people. And yeah, it's again the the you know the it could so easily have cut it could so easily have not had the goat and and then later you know guy dreams about it and he wakes up to another goat so yeah and yeah it's inhumanity from start to finish. And Goran doesn't even wipe the blood from the ring before putting it on his own finger. And, you know, moments after cutting the finger off, an old woman who posed no risk to him, Goran t talks about Luke Perry and growing sideburns. And, you know, then not long after the, the building is, is bombed and the old woman, she didn't... Yeah, he's, he said, let her bleed out. That didn't even... No, she just... And and you know, catch her sitting there, and she's like she's got this apple in her hands, and like you know, she's kind of like spinning it in this kind of like she's it's it's that thing she's trying to make the world smaller because she can't handle what's going on around her. She can't cope with that. No one can, and so she she just yeah. And Goran goes, we just fight for our land, man. That's all. And mere minutes after the truce has started and communicated to the audience, it's broken by the other side. And Goran starts taking bites out of the apple that he stole from the old woman. And a guy shoots Goran the moment that Goran takes the gun off Vera. If... If Guy had fired sooner, the death spasm might make Goran pull the trigger and kill both Virus. So, yeah, it's... And Vera picks up Josh's gun and almost suicides with it. And, yeah, to, to go more in depth, to, I already mentioned that one thing we did need to know about Josh was that he had a child, you know, he was probably, unless work called him away, probably there when his, old ch when his own child was born, you know, spent months with his pregnant wife, making sure she was in good health, so when he see, you know, everybody, nobody likes seeing a pregnant woman kicked, you know, it takes a certain, it, it's, it's only, like, the war and civil war that can conjure up that level of hatred and sadism in a person anyone looking at the scene feels for Vera but to you know this is I mean yeah okay it's been six years since Joshua's own child died but he remembers he he spent time with you know yeah caring about the you know his his wife and the growing child and then to see another, you know, an, another pregnant woman and her child be treated that way. Yeah. And the, you know, guy takes her back to her family. And, you know, the Vera's mother cries, but, you know, and then then she sees the child, but she does take care of the child, and, you know, when Vera, when, when her father and brother return, 
you know, obviously they know that the child is Muslim and, you know, the father almost immediately just walks out. Not, not, not a single hint of, like, consolation or, like, not, not, you know, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're okay, but I wish you hadn't brought the child with, no, no, nothing. Just he immediately walks out and, you know, the brother does hug her and, Vera's mother sings to baby Vera, and, you know, Vera, you know, bo both father and brother are in camo, and Vera's brother, after, you know, briefly talking with the father, says, you must go and take them with you, they can't stay here. And, you know, Vera's mother shouts after them, driving off, but it's too late, they didn't get the bottle lid. So, you know, the, the and yeah, guy realizing, you know, they, they have milk, but not the, the, I, I don't know what it's called. I don't, I'm not, I, I don't have, I've, uh, yeah, I've, I've certainly never had to use the word in English. So, or, or if I have needed to, it's been so long, but yeah, the, the top for the, the let's drinking, you know, and guys angry, swearing. And once fed, baby Vera falls asleep. And the father agrees to take care of it, a way he can restore some of the family's honor. And then Vera drinks the milk. The father shoots at them as they speed off and chase their jeep. And Vera opens the door and is about to throw baby Vera out, but does change her mind and start to show em emotion for baby Vera and you know guy is is like being snarky with her you know over almost throwing the child and he realizes that she drank milk the father hands her the gun to shoot herself with and is about to shoot them but then guy shouts and shoots guy in the gut and, and the brother, you know, one of the few moments where someone actually hesitates, where someone stops themselves from, you know, I ask you not to, Father, think of our soul. And, you know, even knowing Goran almost killed ba ba both Vera and baby Vera, Vera's father's angry at her, you know, angry at her and the man who saved both Vera's. And she starts speaking English, meaning she understood at least some when he was yelling at her at the kid. And that is, you know, I, I think some others have pointed out, it's very convenient that she speaks, you know, speaks English and speaks it so well. You know, they, they communicate for the rest of it with, you know, yeah, with, with, relative ease and this I mean there, there are movies made about people who have trouble communicating because of like language barrier and it goes on for the whole movie and here it's just yeah again it's it's to make it convenient for a western audience they yeah the the movie would have been less accessible if she hadn't spoken so much English in the latter parts of the film. And she wraps up, his, wraps up his wound, showing more of her caring side. And he touches her hair, and it's not, you know, he's not, but nevertheless, you know, she's been raped countless times until very recently. Intimacy with an adult man is abhorrent to her right now. And she walked off while he was asleep. And says, I'm going home. Stop following me. And she's internalized the blame. And then we see that, you know, they, everyone in Vera's village is dead or taken hostage. And then we have the moment, you know, this is one of my only criticisms. But, you know, don't the baby. 
did they really think that we wouldn't understand that without him forgetting that you know and her spelling that out I I really feel like that was like yeah I, I don't know I'll, I'll get more into it in a little and the when Vera starts singing the shaving officer cuts himself by accident not while the other officer kills people with a hammer and mallet but when yeah and yeah here again to, to get more into it why did guy need to be told via head shake by Vera not to shoot he's been so careful to protect baby Vera this whole time how could he possibly think that it would go well if he shot at them obviously they just killed baby Vera to a you know uh, as well as himself but I don't think that matters that much to him as long as baby Vera is safe but yeah what uh, he couldn't possibly have thought that it would go well you know I mean the they don't immediately shoot all the hostages from from the bus but that's not because they don't have all these you know assault rifles it's it's for the reason it's because they're being sadistic if if he shot if he fired a single shot towards them they would easily overtake his position and you know it's it's one thing he not he he wants to protect baby vera if they found a baby you know look at how they're treating adults they would all they would almost definitely be sadistic with baby vera as well and you know i mean would it even matter to them who and if if they realized what the parentage of the the child was then you know yeah i mean whether it's you know the 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 they didn't rape vera with the intent that this child would be raised and have a good life they they did it so that she would feel awful they're not hoping that this child grows up and has a wonderful life you know they hate it because of who who its mother is so and and the others would hate it because of who its father is so yeah and you know the officer thinks that it was just the cat he heard and the cat he can be human towards you know again he could there would be no he could very easily be sadistic towards the cat but no that one he does show human who yeah humanity towards in spite of all this inhumanity towards his fellow man but yeah and you know, guy cries, releasing all the pent-up stress of the recent days. And he used to swear to let it out, trying to keep from feeling the pain. And he gives his cross to pay for the ride. And you know, a man on the bus has a gun. Even taking public transportation, you can't be safe in in this area without a gun. Plot. And I basically just copied in the Wikipedia summary of the plot here. And I'm just going to go into anything that I think would be, yeah, worth going further into. That isn't gone into elsewhere. And Guy is trying to keep the baby quiet, and as such, he has to. He he covers her her face, and once the once it's safe again, he finds that it's it's been too long since she last 
was able to breathe and yeah you know thankfully Vera does start breathing again and yeah And Vera, the baby, is a symbol of the future of humanity, despite the inhumanity of the conflict. And, you know, the, yeah, some, something hopeful has to come out of the awfulness of the war, otherwise it'll never end. It's just, yeah, you know, no, nothing escapes alive, basically. Everything... It's, yeah, no, no one escapes with their humanity intact. Characters. The IMDb trivia points out that Natasha Kinski is given second billing in the opening credits. By the time her name appears, her character has already died. And you could argue that maybe they shouldn't hire her and Skarsgård for such small roles. You know, and people have gone to watch this expecting them to have big roles. And... You know, if they're going to die so soon, cast unknowns. It feels like you're using their names to attract attention. I can see both sides. It kind of it shocks the viewer a lot, Janet Lee and Psycho, but no, ultimately, I don't think that they should have hired big names and put their names on the cover and opening credits and such. According to the IMDb trivia, the original script had the character played by Natasha Kinski as a drug addict who dies of an overdose and Dennis Quaid's character goes on a killing rampage on the drug dealers who supplied her. And then we're back to kind of Hollywood, yeah. And these are from IMDb as well. Sorry about your family. It's war. Why do you need to help me? Need? Yes, I can see you need that. I had a son. He's dead. He had a son. He's dead too. Both died fighting. For what? I am Croat, my wife Serb. Before the war, no difference. Now, stupid. Some of those weren't from the IMDb trivia, IMDb quotes page, but from reviews and such. Critics, users. Yeah, the, as in a typical action movie, Quaid has escorted his ward and her baby from point A, the prisoner exchange bridge, to 
point B, her home. But the movie isn't nearly over, it's barely begun. And the baby girl herself isn't the cute kind that's likely to milk sympathy from Quaid, even if not from her, even if not from the mother. It's a nuisance. She cries constantly because she's not fed. And The attitudes of the Serbs in this movie make it easy to understand how the whole mess started. The sadism of the Croatians at the end of the movie make you wonder if it will ever end. My only question would be the ending. The redemption of the main character by a chance meeting is too convenient and very American in its attitude. Perhaps the film should have ended differently, but then it might have been too much to cope with for the audience. And I do think that the ending maybe has some issues, at least. But it's, again, how do you end this kind of film in a way that, yeah. Critics, pros. Roger Ebert points out, the film argues that much of the blood hate the RP, on both sides involves psychotic male societies in which the women are chattel, to be raped if they're not yours, and killed if they're yours, and have been raped. A guy buys into this eth ethic in the early scenes of the movie, blaming all Muslims for his family's murder by a lunatic fringe. Later he is forced to focus on individual people and finds it not so easy to hate when you know someone. Empathy is the enemy of tribalism. And We see Guy use a sniper scope to take aim and an innocent boy looking for his goat. Guy kills him. A flashback shows how Guy's friend was killed by a girl concealing a grenade. An eye for an eye. And this, you know, that that might as well have been his own son. You know, the to to the the Muslim fundamentalists that bombed the the cafe. That was, you know, yeah. She was raped. Guy protests. This is a meaningless concept to Koran. She has been defiled, and if she were a decent woman, then of course she would already have killed herself. No blame attaches to her rapists, and we assume Goran himself has enthusiastically raped as many Bosnian women as convenient, trusting them to kill themselves or be killed by their fathers, brothers, or helpful male neighbors. Vera buys into the poisoned matcha logic and refers, refuses to nurse or care for the baby. Once Ruffo once wondered if it was really possible to make an anti-war movie since war films were inherently exciting and we tend to identify with one side or the other. Here is an anti-war film. It helps, I suppose, that we see it from the outside. Most American audiences view the civil wars in the former Yugoslavia as insane. While one side or the other might, have, might seem to make a better ideological case, the fighting is based on ancient blood hatred, and the hatred is founded not on religion, but also on tribalism. If you are not like me, then I hate you. The primitive attitudes toward women make it easier to see how many fighters on both sides are killing for reasons more pathological than patriotic.
Quaid plays Guy as a man who essentially shares the values of the men on both sides of the war he finds himself in, until responsibility for an infant forces him back in touch with more civilized values. The movie's not subtle. The symbolism is heavy-handed, and the movie pounds its insights home with big, bold strokes. But Quaid and Ninkovich find the right tone for their relationship. It doesn't get soppy or turn into phony romance, but remains hardened by war. And the end of the story is cathartic, but not happy in a contrived way. Too bad the music is allowed to swell into an inappropriate chorus when the single woman's voice that began the song would have been a more effective closing note, and I have to agree with that. I again, I I get the choice, but I do think it would have been a been better the other way around. A movie like Savior is a reminder that human nature does not inevitably take us upward to higher moral ground but sometimes drags us down to our dog-eat-dog -dog beginnings. It is so easy to blame a group for the actions of a few of its members to make them seem less than human to justify our hatred for them. Of course, movies that demonstrate that are not as much fun as the other kind in which those, yeah, in which they get what they have coming to them. Yeah, here's the a quote that Guy is in Bosnia fighting as a mercenary for the Serbs. Now no different from those who murdered his son, he is capable of coolly killing a young Muslim boy without any regret. Much of Savior's power stems from the director's carefully calculated use of unsettling, shocking acts of violence. The film is not gratuitously bloody or violent, so its individual scenes of horror, like a brutal, random massacre of civilians by a sledgehammer-wielding monster, resonate all the more chillingly. Quaid's stripped-down, emotionally raw performance... Yeah, the far cry from his last act of the parent trap. Quaid is most effective in the film's first half when it's difficult to get inside the character's head. And there is maybe some truth to that. And some point out that Oliver Stone is has made a lot of movies exploring the Vietnam War and the yeah this war is a lot like it. And yes, that's what I had. So just, yeah, amazing movie. And it's, it deserves to be seen by everyone who can handle it.